Today, dear brothers and sisters, we gather to consider a holy, forceful, and pressing message from God. It reminds us of the special and highest part Jesus Christ plays in every one of our life and warns us of the traps and plans Satan is laying all around. Never before has the world seen such advanced temptation, dishonesty, and anarchy as it does in this age and age the Bible notes as the end days. Satan has been released in these times to fool countries, control the planet in every conceivable manner, and drag many souls into the abyss. This goes beyond a warning. It is a call to us to be vigilant, to live with faith and responsibility, so as not to be swept to world the illusions, not to be misled by the crafty snares. Understanding the end times and Satan's plans, one looks back on history. Every 2,000-year cycle in human history has clearly defined a moment of faith significance. From our ancestor Adam to Noah's big flood, from Noah's time to Abraham, and from Abraham to the approaching of Jesus. Now more than 2,000 years have gone since Jesus atoned for mankind by hanging on the cross. And we are indeed living at the time the Bible predicts. Satan is free to mislead countries and attack people in different forms throughout this period, therefore dragging countless souls from God into darkness. This is why we have to maintain alert, avoid all temptations, and aim to keep our faith. Satan has used two smart and clever techniques to fool people. He can come as a subtle serpent, hidden and full of plots and temptations. Or he could show up as a roaring lion causing terror and panic. His beautiful language helps people to see that life is entirely for oneself. And that we are free to pursue glory, fortune, and power without regard for the results. Particularly aiming at the young, Satan uses every tactic to fool them into believing. That freedom is doing anything they want, that they need not pay attention to anyone. No parents, no church, no authority. But beloved brothers and sisters, Behind these pledges comes Satan's venom. Only traps bringing the soul to be destroyed are worldly pleasures, fame, and power. Satan is trying to completely fool the planet and without sparing any country from Australia, the US, Asia, Europe to Africa, and the Middle East. With a degree never seen before, he is disseminating immorality and wickedness. Not by accident, my brothers and sisters. Knowing his time is running short, Satan will do all he can to draw as many souls as he can into the depths with him. Satan will not show up with the horrible face we would instantly identify. Rather, he approaches with cunning. He uses two techniques, either as a snake, quiet, planning, and quite subtle, or as a roaring lion, intimidating guiding. He comes quietly and gently so that we won't know until it's too late, until he has buried his teeth into our souls. He tells every one of us, especially the young, especially you are quite lovely. Young is you. Your life is ahead. You can live for yourself, have independence, and do everything you like. Happy, accept the pleasures of life. You may become well-known. You might be even strong and prosperous. You can do everything you want living in America, Europe, Canada, Australia, in a free nation. Nobody might stop you. Not parents, not churches, not one person. Satan's beautiful phrases readily cause people to believe they are living in actual freedom and happiness. But this is only a trap, the venom of Satan's snake merely waiting in quiet. Benevolent all these pledges conceal behind them suffering and destruction he has already scheduled. Look at the biographies of well-known strong individuals like Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, those who attained all the glory and riches this planet can provide, brothers and sisters. Still, they lost everything at last. This marks the conclusion of a life disconnected from God, off the road of Jesus Christ. Apart from being the rescuer, Jesus Christ is also the strong pillar, the only safe haven in this planet covered in dangers. We will be misled if we try safety anyplace else. Satan will do all to deceive us and cause us to believe that the world offers may safeguard and bring us happiness. But only Jesus Christ is the sole safety net, the only lighthouse to guide us across shadows. There is no hope with Kamala Harris, hence I wish that whoever the next president of the United States is Donald Trump. Any day I would vote for Joe Biden, but not for Kamala, though I pray it will be Donald Will Trump. Joe Biden is far smarter than Kamala Harris with all due regard. 
Still, whoever enters office is by God's will since Jesus is the one who grants and withdraws authority. Not any secret powers, it is God. I pray next time that this message gets to the new president, who will occupy the White House next month. Should he consider this as a prophecy, let him interpret it as a message from Jesus to Mr. President. America will never recover to its previous condition. If he does not identify Jesus Christ as his Lord when he says, God bless America. As I say, Jesus will punish America terribly for deviating so far from his ways. Therefore, Mr. President, say, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, bless America when you say, God bless America the next time. God could mean a cow to some people. Thus, Mr. President, whose God is yours? You are unfit of the post if you are a Christian and hide your God before the people. Whoever is embarrassed of me in this world, Jesus said, I shall be ashamed of them before my Father. Would you like to be treated by Jesus in such manner? Proceed on. Keep assuming. I love each one of you. I pray for all. Still my God is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I will not share my God with anybody else should you not share the same God with me. Since your God is not mine, my sole relationship to other people is human. If you declare your God is Jesus Christ, then it is not the same God, even if you might say you believe in God until the very last. I will still pray for you. I am sorry you have the choice to believe what you choose. But I will not share the belief that we worship the same God or that we believe in the same God. As some Christian leaders have lately misledly stated, one only real safe refuge is Jesus Christ. We need a refuge, a real stronghold to guard our souls from Satan's lie in a world full of hazards and traps. And Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the only one location that can give us this protection. He is the shelter where we might find actual calm, the everlasting city. Except in Him there is nowhere in this planet where we could relax. We can only discover the path to lifetime via Jesus. Only He can help us to overcome anxiety and sorrow. We are sheltered from earthly temptations when we are in Him. He is our light and our Savior, hence we will not fear threats or dark forces. This message, shame and responsibility in realizing Jesus as Savior, is especially crucial for leaders, those carrying enormous social responsibilities. When we pray and ask for blessings for the country, we should not only say, God bless America or God bless the world, but also indicate that it is Jesus Christ, our one and only Lord. We are unworthy of the positions we occupy if we are embarrassed to openly acknowledge Him, or if we do not dare to identify Him as the only Savager. Jesus said quite precisely, I shall be humiliated of whoever is ashamed of me in this world before my Father. This is a kind reminder as well as a sobering warning on which we have to boldly embrace. Believers owe it to each other to maintain our religion strong and avoid being misled by erroneous concepts or worldly trends. We have to be courageous and determined, trusting Jesus, boldly announcing Him, fearless or ashamed before the earth. Dear brothers and sisters, only Jesus offers a road to atonement. Some think that every religion leads to the same God and is the same itself. This is untrue, though. Just Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Other than by Jesus, none else can visit God the Father. We have to understand that our only road to atonement is faith in Jesus. It is not a decision or a band-aid fix. Heaven is a beautiful place. When we consider heaven, we usually picture its tranquility, beauty, and magnificence. Still, the presence of Jesus makes paradise unique. He is heaven itself, not merely the route to it. He is what makes heaven beautiful, as His beauty exceeds all we could conceive. When we see Him, His radiance demands all the beauties and glories of heaven. I hope that every one of us will see Jesus as the sole one who saves our life. Let neither Satan's lies nor the glory of the earth fool us. Place all your faith in Jesus, for only He can grant us eternal life and true peace. May Jesus guide us, help us overcome every challenge and trap set by Satan, and keep us steadfast on the path of righteousness. Dear brothers and sisters, Jesus is the light, the salvation, and our only hope. Let His love and mercy guide our lives, boldly acknowledge Him, and never be afraid or ashamed of Him. Remember that heaven only has meaning when we have Him beside us. If we place our complete trust in Jesus, we will meet Him in the glory of heaven and live with Him forever. May Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our only Savior, bless and protect each of us.
guide us through all difficulties and trials, and bring us to eternal life. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, today we come together to contemplate a sacred, powerful, and urgent message from God. It is a reminder of the unique and supreme role of Jesus Christ in each of our lives, and a warning about the traps and schemes Satan sets everywhere. Never before has the world faced such sophisticated temptation, deception, and chaos as in this era an era the Bible describes as the last days. In these times, Satan has been unleashed to deceive nations, manipulate the world in every possible way, and drag many souls into the abyss. This is not just a warning, it is a call for us to be alert, to live with faith and responsibility, so as not to be swept into worldly illusions or deceived by the enemy's cunning snares. Looking back on history, we can recognize that every two zero 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 year cycle in humanity's journey has marked a significant event in faith. From our ancestor Adam to Noah's great flood, from Noah's time to Abraham, and from Abraham to the coming of Jesus. Now, over 2,000 years have passed since Jesus redeemed humanity through his sacrifice on the cross, and we are truly living in the period foretold by the Bible. In this time, Satan is free to deceive nations and attack people in various ways, drawing many souls away from God and into darkness. This is why we must stay vigilant, be wary of all temptations, and strive to keep our faith. Satan has employed two cunning and sophisticated strategies to deceive humanity. He can appear as a roaring lion, instilling fear and panic, or he may come as a quiet serpent, hidden, full of schemes and temptations. He uses sweet words, leading people to believe that life is only for oneself, that we are free to pursue fame, wealth, and power without caring about the consequences. Especially targeting the youth, Satan tries every means to mislead them into thinking that freedom is doing whatever they wish, that they need not heed anyone. No parents, no church, no authority. But dear brothers and sisters, behind these promises lies Satan's poison. Worldly pleasures, fame, and power are merely traps leading to the destruction of the soul. We are living in a time when Satan is striving to deceive the world thoroughly and without sparing any nation. From Australia to the U.S., Asia, Europe, Africa, and the Middle East, he is spreading immorality and vice with a level of intensity never seen before. This is not by chance, dear brothers and sisters. Satan knows his time is coming to an end, and he will do everything. He can to drag as many souls as possible into the abyss with him. Satan will not appear with a terrifying face that we would immediately recognize. Instead, he comes in a cunning manner. He has two approaches, either as a roaring lion, intimidating, or as a snake, quiet, scheming, and extremely subtle. He comes gently, softly, so that we do not realize it until it is too late, until he has sunk his fangs into our souls. He tells each of us, especially the young, you are beautiful, you are young, your life lies ahead. You can enjoy freedom, live for yourself, and do whatever you want. Be happy, enjoy life's pleasures. You can be famous, you can be rich and even powerful. You live in a free country, in America, in Europe, in Canada, Australia, where you can do whatever you want. No one can stop you, no parents, no church, no one. Satan's sweet words easily mislead people into thinking they are living in true freedom and happiness. But this is just a trap, the poison of Satan's serpent waiting in silence. Behind all these promises lie pain and destruction, which he has planned in advance. Brothers and sisters, look at the stories of famous, powerful people like Michael Jackson and Whitney Houston, those who achieved all the glory and wealth this world can offer, but in the end, they lost everything. This is the end of a life detached from God, away from the path of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not only the Savior, but also the firm stronghold, the only safe place in this world full of snares. If we seek safety anywhere else, we will be deceived. Satan will do everything to mislead us, making us believe that the things the world promises can protect and make us happy. But only Jesus Christ is the only safety net, the true light that can illuminate our path in darkness. I pray that the upcoming President of the United States, whoever it is. I personally pray it will be Donald Trump because there is no hope with Kamala Harris. I would vote for Joe Biden any day but not for Kamala. With all due respect, 
Joe Biden is much smarter than Kamala Harris, but I pray that it will be Donald Trump. However, whoever becomes president, it is by God's will because it is Jesus who gives and takes away power. It is God, not any hidden forces. Next time I pray that this message reaches the next president, who will step into the White House next month. If he sees this as a prophecy, let him see it as a message from Jesus to him. Mr. President, if he does not profess Jesus Christ as his Lord when he says, God bless America, then America will never return to its former state. Believe what I say? America will face terrible punishment from Jesus for straying so far from his ways. So next time, Mr. President, when you say, God bless America, say Jesus Christ of Nazareth, bless America. For some people, God could mean a cow, so Mr. President, who is your God? If you are a Christian and are ashamed of your God before the public, then you are unworthy of the position. Jesus said, Whoever is ashamed of me in this world, I will be ashamed of them before my Father. Do you want to be treated that way by Jesus? Go on, continue pretending. I love everyone. I pray for all. But my God is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you do not share the same God with me, I will not share my God with anyone else. My only connection to others is on a human level, as your God is not my God. You may say you believe in God until the end of time, but unless you say your God is Jesus Christ, then it is not the same God. I am sorry, you have the freedom to, and I will still pray for you, but I will not share the idea that we worship the same God, or that we believe in the same God, as some Christian leaders have deceitfully stated recently. Jesus Christ is the only true safe stronghold in a world filled with traps and dangers. We need a shelter, a true stronghold to protect our souls from Satan's deception. And there is only one place that can provide us with this safety, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the eternal city, the refuge where we can find true peace. There is no place in this world where we can be at ease except in Him. Only through Jesus can we find the way to eternal life. He alone can deliver us from suffering, fear, and anxiety. When we are in Him, we are protected and shielded from worldly temptations. We will no longer fear dangers or dark forces, for He is our light and our Savior. Shame and responsibility in recognizing Jesus as Savior. This message is especially important for leaders, those bearing great responsibility in society. When we pray and ask for blessings for the nation, we should not just say, God bless America, or God bless the world, but we must specify that it is Jesus Christ, our one and only Lord. If we are ashamed to acknowledge Him publicly, if we do not dare to recognize Him as the only Savior, we are unworthy of the positions we hold. Jesus clearly stated, Whoever is ashamed of me in this world, I will be ashamed of them before my Father. This is a serious warning, and also a loving reminder that we must courageously acknowledge our faith. As believers, we have a responsibility to keep our faith strong, not to be deceived by false ideas or worldly trends. We must be brave and resolute, placing our faith in Jesus, boldly proclaiming Him, unafraid or ashamed before the world. Only Jesus is the only way to salvation. Dear brothers and sisters, some believe that all religions are the same and lead to the same God. But this is not true. Only Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one else can come to God the Father except through Jesus. We must realize that faith in Jesus is not a choice or a temporary solution, but the only path to salvation. Heaven is a wonderful place, and when we think of heaven, we often imagine its peace, beauty, and splendor. But what makes heaven special is the presence of Jesus. He is not only the way to heaven, he is heaven itself. He is what makes heaven glorious, for His beauty surpasses anything we can imagine. When we see Him, all the wonders and splendors of heaven pale in the light of His glory. I pray that each of us will recognize Jesus as the only Savior of our lives. Do not let the glories of the world and Satan's lies deceive us. Place all your faith in Jesus, for only He can grant us eternal life and true peace. May Jesus guide us, help us overcome every challenge and trap set by Satan, and keep us steadfast on the path of righteousness. Dear brothers and sisters, Jesus is the light, the salvation and our only hope. Let His love and mercy guide our lives. Boldly acknowledge Him and never be afraid or ashamed of Him. Remember that heaven only has meaning when we have Him beside us.
If we place our complete trust in Jesus, we will meet him in the glory of heaven and live with him forever. May Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our only Savior, bless and protect each of us. Guide us through all difficulties and trials and bring us to eternal life. Amen. If you enjoy our content and want to support us, click on the Super Thanks button below. Your Super Thanks is not just a donation. It is a blessing that supports our mission to share the transformative journey of Jesus.